Hey guys, subscribe for daily knife content. And if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got a really cool knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Herman Slim, which a lot of you guys know that I have already done a video on, except that the, the other one was like a $2,500 custom version, right? This is a much less expensive, much more obtainable version of this knife. Um, and by the way, where can you get these? You can only get them at Polish Custom Knives. I will link them right down in the description. Um, so, just so everybody knows, the first Herman Slim and this Slim were both sent to me by at Sierra underscore bound on Instagram. He wanted me to check them out. I didn't know anything about them. He sent me a, uh, there was a, he was, he kind of sent me a little gallery. He said, these are some knives that I, I really like. And if you want to look through and if there's something that you're interested in taking a look at, I'll send it your way and then you can send it back when you're done. And the slim that he had, uh, sent me a picture of, I was like, what, what is that? That looks gorgeous. I love the profile. I mean, obviously I was attracted to it because it was Damacor and Timascus. This version, titanium. We've got some carbon fiber on the inlay and M390. But I was very attracted to the profile. And once I got it in hand, I was like, wow, this is masterful. I mean, yeah, I'm looking at a really expensive knife, but this is just masterful. And I gushed about it. I didn't get anything. There was no, I mean, Polish Custom Knives and, and uh, Mr. Herman uh, had no idea that I existed. I just, I wanted to take a look at it and I was very, very impressed with it. I got to talk with them after I did that video. And um, they're really nice, really, really nice people, absolutely. And uh, they were just like, hey, thanks for taking a look, you know. And by the way, Sierra and Brown said, hey, I know you said you really would love to look at a less expensive version because truthfully, those really, really expensive knives are not really my range of expertise. And he said, these actually start off at around the $600 price point. And I said, oh, well, fantastic. I would love to look at one of those and see you know, how this translates as a $600 variant and if the quality's still there. And I'm really happy to tell you guys right here at the beginning of the video that yes, it does. I've got a lot to say about this. But like I said, if you wanna check out Herman uh, Knives, check out the link for Polish Custom Knives down in the description. Thanks so much, Sierra underscore Bound, for sending this in for reviews. Thank, thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. You can find a link for my Patreon down in the description. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore Complex. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to do the full review here. Overall length of the Slim coming in at uh, about 8.75 inches overall, which is amazing because the presence of this knife is not one of a gigantic... That's a pretty big... That, that's a big knife, right, in my book. It really doesn't feel like that huge of a knife, which is a good thing. Uh, blade length is coming in at about 3.8 inches and your cutting edge is coming in at about 3.75, maybe just a hair over that. Really, really good ratios on this thing. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. Where's my rat? There it is. The knives are out of order today. Uh, up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and its little brother, the Rat 2. You can see there it's a little bit bigger than both of them. Absolutely. But it, it holds that slender profile. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? And the Spyderco Para 3. Uh, and once again, uh, definitely longer than both. And last but not least, let's put it up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and its little brother, the uh, Benchmade uh, Mini Griptilian. Um, so the scales on this guy are contoured, but it's funny that it makes the in hand this thing is such a, it's such a it's a longer knife, right? But it feels so much slimmer than like the uh, the Hogue Ritter RSK MK1 G2 here because of the dimensions and everything like that. I mean, the term slim is very appropriate, or the word, the name slim is very appropriate for this knife because it's it's so large and so capable, but it is so slim and comfortable and pocket-friendly and wieldy. It's just, it's very good. Let's go ahead and do carry profile up against the Spyderco Pair 3, give you guys a, just a quick tease of the action. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, so the thickness here, I mean, it's not, it's it's about exactly the same, but again, you have to remember, it's a much larger knife. So considering how long this thing is, I would definitely say slim is appropriate. It's not like, you know, a credit card or anything like that, but just dimensionally, it's very impressive. Let's do height and length up against the PM2 and Para 3. You can see here, even including the flipper tab, uh, no, I mean, because of the angle, right? The PM2 is much taller, absolutely. So that flipper tab doesn't bother me so much. Lengthwise, it is a little longer than the PM2, right? If you got shallow pockets, 
maybe this thing's not going to be your best friend. But for me, in regular jeans, regular pants, whatever, right, this is just not a problem. Normally, I would do a hardware check, but as you can see here, we do have a proprietary pivot. Now, something I want to point out, something I did not get right in the um, first Herman Slim review, or I just didn't know, um, they do a whole bunch of different pivots, a lot of different, you kind of, like, if you do a custom order with them, apparently, you kind of get to choose the pivot that you want, or if you just look at the website, they just, there's just a variety of different pivots, right? Each one comes with its own tool, and that's great, so you can disassemble it, but if you lose the tool, I mean, I'm sure they'll let you buy another one, right? But if you lose it, you can't take apart the pivot, or at least you're going to have a rough time trying to, you know, <laughs> find something that can get allow you to get in there. This is one of those things that I really don't care that much about. If it was like, here's the pivot, you can't get into it, that kind of sucks. But they do give you the tool. So I can't complain too much. Would it be better if everything was Torx? Would it be easier, more convenient? Well, sure. But there's a little bit of spice here. There's a little bit of, you know, they put a little pepper in there. You know, I kind of, I don't know, I kind of appreciate that. If they made you buy the tool separately, that'd be one thing, but they don't. They they send the, the appropriate tool with the knife. So I can't complain too much. T6 holding in the, uh, uh, the uh, inlay, right? And then we got some T6 screws back here. That's fine. I always prefer T8, but it's no big deal. What are the little domed off heads? It's actually the other end of the screw going all the way through and then they dome them off. I kind of like that. Uh, T6 on the pocket clip too. Not an overly complicated construct, uh, construction, so it really shouldn't be that difficult to take the knife apart. Just be careful with those T6 heads. You can get my tools right down in the description. They are very inexpensive and very recommendable. Let's take a look at the inside here real quick. Like I said, we are looking at titanium and we are looking at carbon fiber on the uh, bolster. This flashlight is being problematic today. Can we see in there? Can you guys... Can you see? I wonder if I hold it like this, if that would be better. Can we see? There. Milling on the inside of the titanium. So they did go out of their way to reduce the weight a little bit. This knife feels, considering how big it is, it really does feel fairly, you know, featherweight. So again, remember, we're looking at a 3.85 inch blade and 8.75 inches overall. What's the blade stock thickness? I forgot to measure that. Let's do it. Real quick, sorry. I'm sure my voice is trailing off because I'm away, pulling away from the mic there. Blade stock thickness on the slim coming in at 130 thousandths, which I think is appropriate. Okay, so we're looking at 4.27 ounces, which is honestly, that's on the lower end of what I like to carry, but I'm still very impressed considering the blade length. It's not going to be perfect like for people who are like really like has to be laser on an ounce an inch right it's a little bit off there but i think it's still really really impressive i like that a lot i don't have a problem carrying this knife at all obviously for those of you who uh, live in an area where this knife is not legal because of its length it's not going to work out for you but i think even people who are used to carrying shorter knives will find that they appreciate this even if it does add maybe an ounce to your edc right I don't think 4.27 ounces is all that big of a deal, especially considering how much usable blade you're getting on this knife. So it is what it is. Do what you will with that information. All right, so let's talk about this thing. First off, let me say this. Is there any difference in overall quality between this and the $2,500 variant that I handled? Um, no. Uh, the uh, the reason that that other one costs so much money is, number one, the materials that they were using are much more expensive uh, to, to work with and for them to purchase to turn into a knife, right? Um, number two, the amount of extra handwork and extra, the just the general amount of work that went into that is a lot more than this one. But what I wanted to know is, is this knife a different tier of knife in terms of overall quality or does it feel the same? feels exactly the same. It even makes the same exact noise. These blades sing. Not like, you know, it's not like a squeaky, like, oh, there's some debris trapped between the detent ball and the surface of the tang. No, it's just a product of how these, I don't know if that's intentional or not, but they all do that. This is now the third Herman knife that I've handled. They all make that whooching, like they all make that noise. <laughs> I kind of like that. On top of that, the action is unbelievably smooth. It is nice and controlled. It's not a finger guillotine, very consistent on the inside, very false shutty, and very snappy. This has a heavier detent than the Sting, which I actually like. That in combination with the angle of the flipper tab, 
this is a little, I mean, it's definitely a little bird's beak of a flipper tab, right? But they did knock it down a little bit. So you can see it's nicely rounded off and it has that curvature that really makes sense for your finger. My finger finds this naturally. As soon as I pull it, it's going to flip. I don't think I can fail this, guys. No, I, there's no way. It yeah, just, <laughs> they almost turn it, I'm just turning it up right there, Philip. But we are up and at an angle using my thumb. And yeah, no problem. I don't, I think, I honestly feel like I could flip this with just about any finger. Yeah, it's gonna flip. Something that I really appreciate about these knives is that they are not exposed frame locks. They are countersunk titanium liner locks, which I love, especially on a knife like this with a slender profile where you are not ultra limited, but you're somewhat limited on where you can put your fingers on the other side if this were a frame lock. If this were a frame lock, you'd have this cut out here. You'd have to keep your fingers off the frame lock so that you wouldn't be putting too much pressure on that frame lock, which would put pressure on that detent ball, which would put pressure into the detent hole on the face of the blade and make it harder to deploy. You don't have to worry about any of that. Put your fingers wherever you want and pull that. It's going to flip and it feels good. The detent is nice. It's just here. It's perfect. It's perfect. Crispy. Feels good. You can fire it hard. You can fire it light. It's going to flip. Really, really good. I love the action on this. It's very, very easy to disengage because of this nice area. Look how they've done it. Just perfectly carved out. They've got another area that's carved out in the liner lock itself with texturing on it. And then they've rounded the areas that would otherwise be sharp. Oh, it's just, God, that's nice. It's so easy to, there's no double clutch or anything like that. It's just, look at this. This is how this should go. That's exactly how that should work every, it's just, <laughs> it feels, it sounds silly to celebrate something that should be so obvious. It should be present on every flipper tab. But even in 2021, we still have, you know, there's an abundance of titanium frame lock and liner lock flippers running on bearings using M390. There's a massive abundance. It's one of the most popular types of knives and it's amazing how many designers and manufacturers miss that simple thing. It should fall, There's, the detent ball should be well up on the face of the blade so that you can turn it and let it fall into place. It is so easy to go from deployment to use to disengagement, close back in the pocket. So simple and organic, it's just, mm, I like it. Let's talk about the ergonomics. We do have lock-in positions, but not aggressive lock-in positions, and there's a lot of space on the handle. So if you want to choke back right here and do this sort of three and a half finger thing, you can, right? It's obviously not the most comfortable position. The primary position for your hand is basically perfect. Now, I wear an XL glove. If your hands are a little smaller than mine, you'll probably have the same experience. If your hands are a little larger than mine, you'll find that your pinky's falling over or spilling over here, right? You got this ramp right here, you might kind of be sliding off the end. I think for most people, you're going to find a lot of comfort. It's really people with truly large or XL hands that might have an issue with this. But let me tell you, even in the space where I'm locked in between this area right here, right? You can see how perfectly that flipper tab works as a finger guard because it follows the curvature, much like on an XM18. It's just, it's a different flipper tab. Between there and here, this area back here is not so aggressive that it's like, you have to be right here. But while I am, it still feels like I can, my fingers can spread just a little bit. I'm comfortable. If I was gonna be using this knife for an extended period of time, I would be very comfortable barehanded or with gloves. You're locked in. There's some nice texturing on this particular vent. Now they do a few different texture patterns, but look at this, this wavy horizontal texture patterning can, it is enough to feel it. It is enough to gain a little bit of traction from it. Now I've seen they they will do some smooth ones. They'll do some vertical lines, right? I actually have asked them about diamond texturing to see if that might be something that they would do. I don't know that for sure yet, but that's this is great. The texture pattern is great. And I kind of like that it's wavy. It's nice aesthetically. This is a. It's also it translates up to this um, uh, this carbon fiber up here. Um, really, really cool. Their inlay work is really, really good. Um, there's one area right here where it kind of sinks ever so slightly lower than the titanium versus the completely and totally seamless area up here. I don't know if I really want to add too much fault there. I think that's pretty good. I mean, comparing inlay work that I've seen on knives that cost well over a thousand dollars, which believe me, this is nowhere near. I've seen that and worse on knives that cost way more, right? I've also seen knives that do it a little bit better, but again, those knives generally cost a lot more. This is pretty consistent with inlay work that I see anywhere from 
Riot's $400 territory all the way up to, you know, the $1,000 production. It's just not enough to where, if I close my eyes, there's only one area where I can feel the transition and it's right here, right? There's no ugly massive gaps. It's just a, it's not completely and totally flush type of thing. But well, I mean, look at this, this area down here that gets so thin. <laughs> They had to fit that in there. It's pretty good. Honestly, my biggest plaint with the uh, this area right here with the inlay is we got a screw right there. Eh, I don't like that so much. I kind of wish that screw wasn't there. It's not that big of a deal, right? But it's there. I kind of wish that it wasn't. Um, moving up to the blade. I love the blade. We have a sort of concrete, flat, uh, tumbled finish on the blade. It says Herman, which they've actually carved into the blade or etched it into the blade. It's not like the smooth laser. I kind of like that. You can actually feel it. It's nice. And the other side... M390, nothing else, very clean. Look at this beautiful blade. We talked about this in the uh, custom that I handled. Yeah, this is a performance blade, fully flat ground. It's gonna be very capable when it comes to your puncture tasks and it does come to a nice thin tip. Not a tip that I would go prying around with, obviously. Um, and also the edge, uh, this is a newer one and the edge does come down to a nice bitey ultra razor thin. That's a performance blade. That is going to cut and cut and cut. Can I chop concrete bricks in half with it? I wouldn't. Why would you do that, right? Not something that I'd consider to be an ultra hard use knife, but that's not what it was designed for. This knife was designed to cut what I would assume are light to medium materials for an extended period of time. Um, and because of the length of the blade, you do have a lot of, I mean, there's a, in terms of puncture depth, right? Nearly four inches. It's awesome. Nice area right here that's gonna work as the uh, sharpening choil. I wouldn't try to choke up there. I don't think that's perfectly safe, right? But that's not what it was intended to be. Nothing in the cutting path. Beautiful. Some people don't like this simple of a blade. I do. I would really like to see this, this sort of uh, matte tumbling looks good. I'd really like to see more of a polished tumbling. Something like, um, I guess we can use the pit. This is dirty, right? This isn't a great. That's a good example. Um, maybe more of the polish. Does, I mean, obviously, I prefer, I don't prefer the larger scratches, but like something that's a little bit more polished, like on the 8020 here. I think that would look fantastic on this. I don't think that would be difficult for them to do, and maybe they have a reason they don't do it. But I think it would be a nice, you know, different type of finish that they could apply. May, I mean, it would just be something that I would pull the trigger on over something like this, but I really like how this looks. I imagine they have a few different options for finishes, right? They obviously have different blade materials, things like that. But I just like a, you know, a more polished look. And they do some nice polishing on their uh, titanium frames. So that would be cool. I like that a lot. But the way that this blade is, is beautiful. There's no flaws in the edge or anything like that. Perfectly even cutting bevel on both sides. I like that they've got just a hint of a swedge right there the tip. It's also interesting how this blade sort of, it's like we have continuous, 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 they slightly change the angle and then it just kicks out just a little bit of the tip, right? That's what that sounds like. <laughs> Love it. Corners up here, nicely knocked down. I imagine that's partially a product of the tumbling and then maybe they do some extra work right there to knock it down. No jimping. I don't think it needs it. No big deal. Pivot is captive and it's a uh, specific, it's kind of a unique shape to keep that ca captive in there. I, I like that a lot. That's really neat how they did that. Backspacer comes to this sort of almost like the it, like a hatchet head right there, how the, it comes to a point. I like that. And it's ever so slightly raised above the titanium and that's on purpose. It's like that all the way through on both sides, all the way down here. Really nice. In this case, carbon fiber. This is slightly upgraded from an, a totally base version, right? The carbon fiber inlay and the carbon fiber backspacer will make this cost a little bit more than that 600-ish territory that I was talking about. When, we, when we're looking at one of these, it's going to cost roughly $600. You're looking at plain titanium and M390, but everything else in terms of quality and fit and finish, right? So, But this is much closer to a base version, which is why I wanted to look at it. Um, we've got the two screws for the pocket clip. I think pocket clip depth is fine. I think the pocket clip shape works really, really well with the overall slender profile of the knife. You have this area right in here uh, carved out, which is kind of neat. I mean, I'm not sure the exact purpose of it. Maybe it creates for the, it gives the pocket an area to kind of squish down in there, the pocket seam or the pocket itself, right? Um, and I'm not sure that the, it's not the relief cut because again, it's a countersunk liner lock, but one area that bothers me a little bit that I didn't notice as much in the custom because of how busy everything was, these are the two screws. The screws that hold in the liner are inside, right? They're underneath. The lines here, like the, all these screws follow this line. 
uh, they follow the line of the pocket clip and this little area that's been milled out underneath it, right? And then these screws kind of go this way. It bothers me just a little bit that this screw up here isn't lined up perfectly with all the other screws. Like it, it goes off in its own way, right? And I'm sure there's a reason for that, but I, I did notice it because we don't have as much busyness going on here, right? It's fine. It's not hurting anything functionally. I just noticed. I'm like, that screw is a little bit, it's like goes off this way. I'm sure it's just how that's mounted under there, right? But okay, little teeny tiny criticism. There is no lock stick whatsoever on this guy. Incredibly easy disengagements. Um, and the blade, can I show you guys here, is absolutely dead on, perfect. Lock up, no blade play, up, down, left, or right, nothing. We have that stop pin right there. Nice area right here where it's rounded so it wraps nicely around the stop pin, that's great. I think, hang on, let me get my flashlight. Taking a look in here. Is there a, no, there's, that's not. That's all titanium in there. So, titanium, as far as I know, titanium liner. Let me get my magnet. I think it was slightly different on the other one. Yeah, that's all titanium. But that's okay, it doesn't need the lock bar insert. I wanna, I wanna say the slim ultra custom that I had, there was a little chip in there, but either way, it's fine. Obviously, this thing has not had any trouble locking up. Carbonized titanium lock face is gonna work out just fine. This is beautiful. I got, you know, like for some people, it's gonna be too big, it's gonna be too long. Legally, it's not gonna work, right? Uh, some people who have really huge hands are gonna find their pinky sliding off the back over here, not that big of a deal. My only true couple of critiques, right? Just one little area where the uh, inlay is not perfectly flush, but it's still really good. I don't like that screw right there. I think that pulls away from the aesthetic of everything else. I think that this knife is so beautiful. I don't mind these little screws poking out right here. I think that kind of looks neat. I like that, how they dome them off right there. It just, it looks good. Everything else is so clean. And this, the one place where my eyes go, I'm like, why is that there, you know? Might have, maybe if it was anodized or if it was, like if it has to be there, if it was dark, like if that was black to go with it, if it was the same color as the material behind it, it might have helped a little bit. But I honestly would prefer that it wasn't there at all. How would they do that? I don't know, because I don't make knives. I'm just pointing out that's where my eyes go. And then the weird angle of this one right here. But okay, I mean, those are silly, silly little complaints, right? Again, the, sink, the thing with the pivot, which doesn't bother me much, but I can understand why some people would just prefer that it was Torx. Um, okay, kind of, that's kind of an epic. Outside of that, I got nothing. In fact, it's like I, I mentioned here recently on my, I, I did an updated 2021 um, greatest folding knife designs of all time video and the Herman Slim made it in there because guys, honestly, this is a really, really excellent design. This is beautifully thought out. On a level that somebody like me, a simple knife enthusiast, could not possibly begin to comprehend when compared to the person who actually designed and made this. I'm just telling you as far as like what my hands, where my hands wanna go when I'm using the knife, when I'm disengaging the knife, right? I'm flipping it. When I'm, my dog is like really upset with the noon whistle. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear him. He's out there howling. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, this was so beautifully thought out. It's such an organic extension of the human hand, which again sounds silly. We're talking about a knife, right? All knives are made to fit in your hand and cut, right? Well, yeah, on a base level, but how that actually translates into the design, believe it or not, there's quite a bit of difference. There are so many knives out there that are like, well, it has a handle and a blade, but it sure doesn't feel comfortable in hand. It's got a flipper tab, it doesn't really flip. It's got a liner lock that doesn't disengage super comfortable. It's kind of a mess, kind of a, there should be no extra work involved with using these mechanisms. I've always said over and over again, what makes a good design, you know, outside of a lot of different things, but on the most basic level, a knife should be able to be removed from the pocket easily with one hand. You should be able, it's got a flipper tab, you should be able to easily, with no thought or extra effort, it should be able to flip, right? You should be able to instinctively uh, place your hand into a position that feels comfortable and optimal for most generic cutting tasks, right? And the blade, generally speaking, should easily pass through material without getting hung up on unnecessary aesthetics and little embellishments that really don't need to be there, right? As if we're talking about a tool. Then you should be able to comfortably disengage the knife. In this case, it's completely effortless, right? 
no part of my brain needs to be dedicated other to, than to the physical movement, right? It's so easy. Click down, put it back in your pocket with one hand, which again is going to be super easy because they, we have that continuous rise on the bill. This is all nicely knocked down. The pocket clip is not a hot spot or anything like that. Beautiful. That's how this should be. This is absolutely, despite this, you know, using materials like carbon fiber, titanium, and M390, which are super common at the two to $300 price point in the knife world right now, and in some cases a little bit less, this is obviously on a totally different level than those knives, right? If you're gonna, again, if you're gonna reduce the value of the knife to the materials, that's fine, walk your own path, you're missing out on a lot. You're missing out on a lot. There's a huge difference between something like this and something that generally costs between two and 400. So. What's the base price? What's the true base price of a Herman Slim? I think it's around 600. I think it's right around there. Now, the reason I say might be because there's old listings of knives that are out of stock that were a little bit less than that. I don't know how long ago that was. I don't know if their price points have changed. Prices change a little bit, you know, as, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the materials change with the knife over time, right? Or the maker's skill gets a little bit better and just time in general, right? The, their costs for getting a, a lot of these materials and turning them into knives might increase. So the reason I say roughly 600 is because these are not knives that there's a, a whole lot of information. I mean, you can go and see videos on YouTube, how they're made, right? They're, they're very, very open on that, but this knife has not been around as long as like um, as far as I'm aware, like the PM2 or something that, you know, there's a lot of information on. They're also not extremely plentiful because these are not made in like thousand knife batches. They're not stamped and pressed out of a machine. That's not, these are small batch knives. The base price, is it worth 600 bucks for a Herman Slim? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. The value here is very, now look, 600 bucks is a lot of money for a knife. Absolutely. There's a lot of people watching this right now going, I'd never pay more than a hundred bucks for something. I'm just going to make simple cuts with. That's fine. But for those of you who are really looking to find knives that have excellent quality in this higher ultra high end production territory or semi custom territory, which is absolutely where we are at the $600 mark, right? The quality here is off the charts. This is fantastic. I legitimately believe, I mean, it is my God's honest opinion that this is one of the best knife designs uh, that has ever existed. And it's also at $600, considering what, what's being brought to the table here, this is excellent. Add one of these to your collection. For those of you who are, you know, you know you're big into the knife, like this, if you're just looking for a simple tool, well then, yeah, go ahead with the rat too. I mean, that, that's all the more you need, right? But if you're somebody who really likes to dig into those little intricacies, right? You like to experience excellent designs for the money and excellent quality, all those little teeny tiny details that we start to look for after we've handled tons and tons and tons of knives in these upper price territories. Add one of these to your collection. You know, cherish it, put it in a display case, or take it out and use it. Whatever you want to do, it's your money. This is excellent, no matter how you look at it. Highly, highly recommendable. This is going to be going in my favorite knives of all time playlist, and it's also beginning, going to be going in my um, most recommendable knives playlist. I'm also going to be putting it in my custom and semi-custom knives playlist because, yeah, we're definitely looking at bare minimum, ultra, mega, high-end production territory. This is, it, it's, it's there, right? I mean, I'm sure we can split hairs all day, but those are the, it's going in three playlists is what I'm telling you. Thanks again to at Sierra underscore bound on Instagram for letting me take a look at a less intimidating version of this knife. Thank, uh, and uh, shout out again to Polish Custom Knives. Great, great, uh, great people over there, absolutely. Guys, be sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.